Jesus prays. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you, God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We honor the Lord tonight, for indeed he is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the very same, there is no God like him. To Minister Farquharson, to all officers, brothers and sisters, those by way of internet, God bless you. Good to have you with us tonight. We just want to get straight into the word. It's our Bible study night, and it's your first time. A special welcome to you to our Bible study. We turn our Bibles to the book of Daniel, chapter 9. Daniel, chapter 9 is where we're going tonight. Let's see how much of Daniel 9 we can go through in the time that we have tonight. Daniel 9. Daniel's a very one of those Old Testament prophets. He's classified to be a major prophet. And a young man that is described as one with an excellent spirit. His name, Daniel, means God is my judge. God is my judge. That's right. God is my judge. And so this particular book reveals that the faithful cannot only survive in difficult times but also thrive in difficult times what we're seeing in this book is that there will be difficult times and we'll not only be surviving it but we'll be thriving in it is what daniel brings to our attention as long as we remain loyal and committed to god and devoted to prayer we can go through any storm i'm going to see this in this young man's life um, before we get to the text of reading um, in fact let's just read verse number four of daniel 9 daniel 9 and verse number four all right we'll get back to it but let's go to verse number four and then we come back let's read it together and i prayed unto the lord my god and made my confession and said O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. Beautiful. All right, so when we get to Daniel chapter 1 in particular, we find Daniel and his three Hebrew friends, Hazariah, Mishael, and Hananiah, otherwise known as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refusing to defile themselves with the king's meat because the king's meat in those days would have been offered to idols and so what these men did was requested to be tested and they did this because they did not want to sin against god and so without a flat outright refusal of the king's meat they asked the eunuch who was in charge of them to give us a 10 days test and see if we do not fare better than those who are eating at the king's table. In other words, we can still meet the king's request without doing it the king's way because the king's way will defile me. So I want it to be done in such a way where at the end of the day, both the heavenly king and the earthly king is satisfied and I have not sinned. If he eats from the king's table, he sins against his God and please the earthly king. Daniel doesn't want that. And so that requires wisdom. <laughs> we need to know what to do in a situation like that. And so what do we do? We ask, James 1 tells us, that if any man lack, let him ask, and the Lord will bring the revelation. By the time we got to Daniel chapter 2, we found, him, we found, um, we found that Daniel no, found himself facing death because none of the wise men of Babylon could recognize the dream and interpret it. So King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. He said that he had forgotten the dream and asked his counselors, to tell him what the dream is and the interpretation 
Otherwise, you will be killed. And here comes Daniel, because he is one of the young men that is a part of those who would give advice and are there to counsel and to share with the king. And so Daniel heard about the decree and asked the king for some time. Left King Nebuchadnezzar and went to prayer with the three Hebrew boys. And they had a prayer meeting that night and asked the Lord to reveal the king's dream and the interpretation thereof. And through prayer, the dream was made known and the interpretation thereof. Prayer, the power of prayer. And so they were able to share with the king and the king was amazed when the Lord revealed the secret because the king did not let anybody know. I find it fascinating because the king said, when you tell me the dream, I will know that you have the interpretation. And that makes a lot of sense because he knows what the dream is. So when you're telling the dream, he will know. And if you're telling the dream that he dreamt, that he says he can't remember, then he knows that if I didn't tell it to you and you find out what the dream is, you must have the interpretation. Make sense? The magician said, we don't have anybody ask any questions like those of any counselor. He said, that kind of information lies with the gods who does not dwell with flesh. But little did these men know that, guess what? There is a young man who carries the spirit of Almighty God. And he maintains that relationship with God through prayer. So he can receive divine. You must understand that Daniel is, is, has been taken captive. He was living in Babylon. Babylon, sorry. He was living in Judea, right? In Jerusalem. And Babylon came and took over, plundered Jerusalem. Took precious gems from the tabernacle. And took not only precious metals and gems, but also took young men and women who are of particular standards and quality and well learned. Because what Babylon did, unlike Assyria, which was before them, is that Babylon tried to integrate their captives into their society and take advantage of the skills that they have. Unlike Assyria, Assyria plucked out people's eyes. Like they did to Zedekiah. Look at your sons. And he killed his sons in front of his face and then plucked out his eyes. So the last thing he saw was his son's death. And you live with that for the rest of your life. That's torturing, torturous. They cut out ba baby, ba um, baby out of women that are pregnant. That's the Assyrians. They're vicious and cruel. But Babylon desire another method to integrate. And, and guess what? These kind of enemies are still among us today. The spirit of the Assyrians and the spirit of the Babylonians. You know, the spirit of the Assyrians are the ones who try to cause you not to see when God is showing you what's taking place. They have eyes, but they can't see because the enemy has blinded. So the watchman not watching anymore. They will try to assassinate the giftings and the birthings of the things of God. While the Babylonians will try to integrate themselves and mix it and, 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 and take advantage of your skills, not for the glory of God, but for their own benefit. And so people are gifted and they're quote unquote doing the work of the Lord, but they're seeking their own benefits rather than the God of heaven. And so there, Babylon moves in and takes Judea captive. 900 miles away, and Daniel is a part of the captivity. Taken to an environment where, unlike home, there are gods all over the place. He's not accustomed to that. It's a different language in the day. And so they take them and start to train them and to indoctrinate them 
in their culture and their system. It's a plot of the enemy. But Daniel made up in his mind that even though I am in Babylon and I am dressing like a Babylonian, I am not a Babylonian. Somewhat like Moses. Looked like an Egyptian, but a Hebrew to the core. And understood the mind and the will of God and was willing to sacrifice everything for the sake of God. Why is it that these men were able to do these things? Because they were men of prayer. They knew how to get before God. And while the nations was backsliding, these men were in the face of God constantly. Others were backsliding. They never turned. While the nations seemed to be prospering, prospering, God told them that underneath is rottening. And they saw from God's perspective and echoed the voice of God and the heart of God concerning the situations in their own day. And not just their own day, but even the day in which we live. And so they end up prophesying beyond their own day into ours. The lesson that we're going to do is one such lesson where we saw Daniel goes even to our day and prophesies. And so we find in chapter number three that the Hebrews, the Hebrew fell out of favor with King Nebuchadnezzar. And they held fast to their faith, the faith in their God. So this is Darius now, I think it is. No, these are the three Hebrew boys in chapter number three. So Daniel wasn't around at that time. And we have these three Hebrew boys and we have King Nebuchadnezzar. And the decree went out that if anybody does not bow to this image that he got. Remember, it's the same image that Daniel interpreted for him. And he went ahead and erected the image massive stature of himself and he commands people to bow down and worship the image and if they don't then he's going to throw them into fire we have the three Hebrew boys in this instance Daniel is probably gone off on a business trip he's a leader he's a world leader <laughs> he's very busy Bible didn't say where he was but we have these three Hebrew boys who are on the scene and they said, when the music starts, it's time to bow. And these three boys decided that, guess what? We are not bowing. Now, brothers and sisters, we need to understand that, guess what? There are other Jewish saints that were there. And you know what they were doing? They were bowing. <laughs> but these three decided, we will take a stance for Almighty God even if it cost us our lives. There were men who knew their God. Babylon did not know their God. And in order for Babylon to know their God, somebody has got to take a stance. And it's somebody who knows how to pray. So we're seeing prayer more than just a petition on behalf of myself. A petition that brings me into the knowledge of who he is so that I can make him known to others. Because when you and I can pray and get answers from the Lord, it suggests that you know him. And it doesn't matter what you're going through, we can always go to the Lord and share with him our concerns and he tells us what to do. And so, you know the story quite well. The three Hebrew boys withstood. They stood up. And they said, we know our God is able to deliver us. But just in case he doesn't, we still, we're still not going to bow. In other words, we're willing to die for this. And the king was upset. It's the same king who saw the hand of God. And recognize that God was with these men. It kind of reminds me of Pharaoh because when Moses came to Egypt and he performed a miracle, it was like it wasn't recognized. It took up to about the third or the fourth miracle before the Egyptians said, This is the finger of God. So Daniel interpreted the dream. 
Nobody else could get it and told you the interpretation. And it's like, okay. <laughs> you know? He did a good job. <laughs> and he doesn't understand that God is taught. By the way, God is the one who gave Nebuchadnezzar the dream. And God now tell his son. So, so God is the one who is setting this up for his glory. So I make sure I give the, him a dream and I know that I have a man in the camp. <laughs> God is not ordinary. He is just extraordinary. He's amazing. Give the king the dream and know exactly what the king is going to do. And make sure he has a man in the place because he's going to set up his man to get his glory. And Babylon needs to know who God is. He is in captivity. Though he is in captivity, he understands his role and his responsibility and his obligation to God. But when we are in captivity, is that how we respond? When I'm held captive by a situation and it's not letting go because God allowed me to be in the situation, how do I respond to him? Can I understand that this is for his glory? This is more than just for me and I want to get out, Lord, get me out, get me out. And all the praying is just get me out, get me out. But is God saying, I allowed this to happen so that I can get my glory out of your life. And we don't know until we pray and allow God to reveal to us what is going on. Job said, I look to the left, I can't find God. I look to the right, Lord, but I know he knows where I'm at. I might not know and I might not be able to discern him in what he's doing, but he knows exactly where am I. I need to keep on trusting, keep on believing, keep on depending on him. Because I am his child. And he takes care of his own. He's that kind of God. And so these boys were thrown into the fire. And just like the tree that Moses saw that was on fire and was not consumed. God has done this before. You know? Here are three Hebrew boys in the fire. And their clothes. It's not even not only burning. No. It's not. Hello, the hair on the men's hand, head, hands on their body, head is not singed any at all. And there's no smell of. Oh, hold on, remember now, God blow wind and cause sea to dry up. <laughs> and here he is now. By the way, you know, that skeptics have a hard time dealing with these books <laughs> because the stories and so on. But, but, but when you know that God can do the impossible, that he is the omnipotent God, and there's nothing impossible for him. And these lessons were written for our learning, so that when we are going through what we are going through, we can always look back. Many of them didn't have anything to look back at. They didn't have any book to look back and say, let me see if anybody went through this that I'm going through. But today... We have it. I'm telling you, we don't have any excuse in We have the word written. We have the spirit of God speaking to us. We have angels assigned to watch over us. Woe be unto us if we don't do what the Lord tells us to do. We are, hello, we are, in the, we are in the best. Hello, Daniel is awesome. You know? And the Lord said, anyone in the kingdom today is greater than all of them. Today, Men and women who are in Christ Jesus is greater than all the Old Testament prophets. John was the greatest, and the least in the kingdom of God is greater than John. And you see how powerful this guy is? And the Lord is saying, you, with my Holy Spirit inside of you, is greater than him. I want us to think about these things seriously. No? And we look at these men and, say, and we revere them and say, wow, powerful. I want to be like Daniel. And Daniel said, I want to be like you. Because what you got, I only heard about it and desired it. The Bible says the prophets and the angels desire to look into these things that we have. So we don't understand what we have. 
But we need to investigate it. And if we do, God will reveal it. And when it's revealed, we'll walk like Paul. Because Paul got it. And so, these men were thrown into the fire, came out unscorched, and the king was amazed. Because no other God can deliver after this sort. This is just mind-blowing. We threw, hello, the men that threw the boys in the fire, they died from the heat. <laughs> from the heat, kill them. And the men who went in the fire came but out unscorched. I can imagine that king, you know. <laughs> he must be mesmerized. I saw, hold on, I thought it was three men who put in the fire. There's a fourth man in the fire. God dispatched an angel and sent an angel inside the fire with them. Is there anything too hard for our God? They came out unscorched and guess what? Their God became the real deal. Because now people began to know that, hey, I don't know any God that delivered after this kind. They are serving the real God. This God is the God that we need to serve. These men, these men, these men. And then Daniel again got to a place where they started to, the enemies of Daniel started to concoct a plot to bring down Daniel because he was too clean. You know, he always did everything right. The book kept the books in order and everything. And then they're trying to find a way to bring him down and they just couldn't bring him down. So they decided to use the thing that he loves to do most, his prayer life. Don't you know that the enemy will target our prayer life? Yes, he will, all the time. Doesn't want us to pray. Because he knows that if we pray, God will answer. It will become dangerous. Because when you have God's answer on a matter, you ask David, re pursue and recover all. That is, you will destroy the enemy. And the, the Lord doesn't want us to go into prayer. Because if we, enemy doesn't want us to go into prayer. Because if we do, we have conquered him. Because all we need to win is a word from the Lord. Just one word. Just one word. And that gives us victory over the enemy. So he does not want us to pray. So Daniel's prayer life came under attack. We're going to put him in the lands. Then they wrote a decree, deceived the king to seal the decree. And the Medes and the Persians law cannot be revoked. Once it is settled and sealed, that's it. And so... Anyone found praying to another God, not praying to Darius himself, shall be thrown into the lion's den. King didn't know that they were setting up against Daniel. So when they brought Daniel, King was surprised because he can't believe. Daniel, no, no, no. What are you doing? You don't remember the decree that you wrote. You wrote it and you know that you can't change it. They set up the king. <laughs> so Daniel going to be thrown into the lions then <sighs> just 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 30 days just stop praying for 30 days and after that you're fine now hear us with our logical wisdom well let's use wisdom <laughs> we can resume prayer after 30 days <laughs> that's earthly wisdom <laughs> devilish the bible says sensual earthly wisdom is that flavor daniel me? Stop praying? You must be joking. <laughs> Hello. Three times a day he went into prayer. Morning, noon, and night. Every day. Every day he clocks in. Lord, I'm here again. That's what you have me to do. And you got to understand the, the prayer life of a Hebrew. Is that a part of the prayer session is Bible reading. So they open the Bible and they start to read the Torah. And they read and they pray. And they read and they pray. And they sometimes sing a song as they read and they pray. That's a, a whole prayer session taking, up, um, taking place. And they're worshiping the Lord and they're reflecting on the things that they've read concerning the Lord. So Daniel prays as he always does. He's now caught and they set him up, bring him to the king. 
The king is trying to help him out because he doesn't want this to happen to Daniel. He, he, has, uh, he, he, he likes Daniel. But because of the decree, he has to allow Daniel to go to the lion's den. And if you think about it logically, you put the, hello, in the den, other bones are there because other men have been eaten. And down there don't smell too nice. The stench is horrible. The smell of death, blood dried, skulls there. Daniel is placed into the lion's den. The king couldn't sleep up all night. As they break up, and the king believed in Daniel's God. Has to. Because why do you go to a lion's den where you've thrown so many men before and they're dead? But Daniel, you turn up because I know this man served the true and living God. Does, 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 does people know that you serve the true and living God? The king knew. Hello, Daniel served Babylon, served Nebuchadnezzar. And from Nebuchadnezzar to Belshazzar to now Darius, he is known by several kings. He is known as a man of God. Hello. When we talk about the kings, you know, we're talking about a king that overthrew the Medes and the Persia, overthrew Babylon. Normally, under normal circumstance, when you overthrow a nation, the key men that are closest to the king get killed. But you can't touch Daniel because Daniel's king is not earthly. Daniel's king is the God of glory. And God has a purpose sitting on the man's life. So he allows him to serve from king to king. He has relationship. He understands world power because God elevated him, placed him there, and gave him wisdom to manage the day in which we live. It doesn't matter which king comes on the scene and what the nature of the king is, he can handle it because his God is the one who sets up the kings. What a God. And the king runs out to the den in the morning to check on Daniel. He obviously believes Daniel. And he calls him, expecting an answer. And he hears, oh, king, leave her. Hello, take him out, take him out, take him out. <laughs> fast, fast. Oh, guess what? He never been in a hurry. He spent the night with lions that were hungry. But he did what he always did. He prayed. And God, the Bible says, released an angel and locked the mouth of the lions. God can lock the mouth of our enemies. And we can be in the den with them and they can't touch you. Because God is with you. Hallelujah. When God is with you, the enemy cannot destroy you. It is not possible. And that's the God that we serve. You know, we don't want to go into the lands then, but that's where God gets his glory. And he's looking for somebody who's willing to stand in spite of the threat that comes to our very lives. Will I be willing to still stand, give up my life if that's what he wants? Because when God sees that, you tell me, come on, talk to me. When God looks in the earth and sees somebody say, I will stand, I'd rather die. God said, angels, get in place. Hey, we need you down here. Go down to earth. Angels are on their way. Backing you up. You don't even, we don't even understand what's taking place in the realm of the heavenlies. No? We think we're all by ourselves. But they are ministering spirits to the hearers of salvation. If you got a glimpse of what's taking place in glory, you wouldn't stop worshiping. You wouldn't stop, hello, walk in any territory and just walk and the power of God just manifest. You know why? Because God is with us. And if God is for us, tell me who can be against us. No one. God will lock the mouth of the lions. Jesus. It's not one lion out there. No. It's lions. Hungry. And see dinner coming. And the Lord said, you can't eat this one. Because his name is God is my judge. And he, the king of glory, judged me and found me innocent. And if you're innocent, you can't be eaten. You're guilty. <laughs> you are dinner. 
but he was innocent in the eyes of God. God defends his own. So the enemy, take, what, does, what does the king do? The men who got him in there, throw them down there. And the Bible says before they hit the ground, the lion had them for dinner. Before they hit the ground, before they hit the ground, they were eaten. <laughs> Hello, all night without any food. <laughs> and suddenly food is... And guess what? They're not getting one man. <laughs> They're getting more than one. They're getting a feast. Jesus. <laughs> Lord of mercy, Jesus, he locked. So we see these boys, we see these men prevailing against fire. Their prayers, prayers, prayers prevailing against fire, prevailing against lion. Um, they, the prayers giving them standing rather than bowing to the pressure of the enemy. Prayer, prayer, prayer will keep us standing, guaranteed every time. So here comes Daniel in chapter 9, and he is praying. And the first year... Daniel 9, verse 1. In the first year of Darius, the son of Asrus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. So this is Darius, Medes and Persian, came and took over the Babylon Empire. The Bible says, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet and he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. So hold on. So Daniel is reading his Bible. He's reading the prophet Jeremiah. He is reading because part of his daily schedule is to read and pray. And he's watching the time in which he lives and God is informing him what is taking place in the day that he's living. I, Daniel, understood by books, by the word of God, the number of the years. And when he read in Jeremiah, Jeremiah said, you're going to be there for 70 years. So Daniel know how many years we are gone and know how much years left. Because, hello, the word of God, the prophet Jeremiah spoke it. And Daniel was taken captive by the Babylonians, like Jeremiah said that they would. So he's living out the prophecy of, the, of Jeremiah and seeing it happening for himself. And know that if God said we're going to only be here for 70 years, it's only 70 years. So when 70 years stop, it's time to go home. But well, guess what? By this time, people have been living in Babylon for 70 years. That's a whole generation. People buy their own house, settle down, comfortable, have family. And, the next, and guess what? They not have no plan to leave. <laughs> but the prophecy said, you're going back to your homeland. Because you have to understand, you know, there's a Messiah that is coming. But the people need to be in Jerusalem. The temple needs to be erected. And the, my city needs to be in order. And so on. Daniel said, I understood by book of years. So what did I do? Read number verse 3. He did what? And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. My God. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my... Hold on. So Daniel has a desire that came out of what he saw in the word and then it propelled him to pray so when we are reading and god is revealing he's going to lead us into prayer the prayer too hard take up the book and start to read and say talk to me lord and as he speaks to you through the word you start to get revelation and guess what you need to respond to him because he started talking to you. So what do we do? We pray. Daniel started. He had a desire for his people, not just for himself. Daniel is not saying, hey, in the first instance, we didn't do anything and I was taken captive. But I understood that God is doing something. 
God allowed the enemy to take me here for a reason and for a purpose. So while I am here, I'm going to find out what the will of God is for me in this place. And while he's there, he develops a burden, not just for himself, but for his people, the people of God. Because God is always looking for a man to put his burden on so that his will can be accomplished in the earth realm. I'm just looking for somebody who says, Lord, here am I. I'm willing. Sackcloth, ashes, fastings, supplications, seek by prayer. Hello, after he's been reading and it's been birthing inside of him, he's pressing in deeper into prayer. He's going into intercessory prayer. It's like Nehemiah. Nehemiah heard that the walls of Jerusalem was broken down and he wept night and day, cried unto the Lord, prayed and cried and prayed and cried and sought the Lord. And for four months, he was on his face before God, night and day, working for the king, a cupbearer, but constantly praying because there's a burden on his heart god will look for a man a woman a boy or a girl to put his burden on so that his purpose can be done in the earth outside of that we are on our own for somebody for god to intervene in the earth realm he has to find somebody somebody has to make themselves available if there's no moses what happened to the children of israel in egyptian bondage they continue to die. If God doesn't have a man in Babylon, what happened to them? And they're still in bondage. So God is looking for somebody. Because guess what? You and I know people that are in bondage. And he's looking for somebody. He said, Lord, here am I. Somebody's in the bondages of sin that needs to be released. But somebody needs to pray that individual out of the bondage. Because the enemy is not going to sit down and watch us and say, hey, just come to serve the Lord. And you just get them and walk out like that. Nothing worse than that. Soul winning is warfare. We're going for a soul, pulling that person out of the kingdom of darkness, bringing them to this marvelous light. You have to war for that individual because no devil can sit down and watch you plunder his kingdom and take out men that he has captives and allow you to walk and make the man come serve Jesus under no condition. So we have got to be ready to guess what? Stand up and fight even if it costs up our lives. He set his face. So Nehemiah was one for four months until the Lord released him to go and do the work. God put him and struck a burden upon him just like he did for Daniel. So the people are here. And you're going to have to get them out. We need to, we need, it's, it's about time. We're going back home. We're not staying here. Daniel is in prayer now. Remember now, his prayer is being propelled by the word of God. He is reading his Bible. And as he reads his word, as he reads the word of God, he is now propelled into prayer. And I pray unto the Lord my God and made my supplication, made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God. Notice the approach. Oh Lord, the great and dreadful God, mighty God and Savior Jesus. You know that God is a dreadful God, right? In other words, the awesome God. That word dreadful actually means awesome. It's, it's, it's our Father which art in heaven. You're great, hallowed be your name. You're awesome, you're great, you're wonderful, is what Daniel is saying. Dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his command because our God is a covenant keeping God and although they are in captivity because of their own sins why they were not why they were sent there was not for them to be destroyed but for God to rid them of their idolatry so when God punishes it's not to destroy it is to make us better so when you're going through and understand that God is behind what we're going through it's therefore time to rejoice Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation, knowing that the trying of your faith work in patience. You're going to be stronger. You're going to be wiser. You're going to be... If you know God is behind what the hell that you're going through, you must rejoice because it's going to make me better. I'm better. I'm stronger. I'm wiser because of what I've been through. But you've got to know who's behind it. <laughs> and that comes through prayer that God makes it known. 
what is happening behind the scene. Mighty God and Savior. Notice he says, we. Verse 5, does it say we? He says, we have sinned. So he's moving from I. And he's taking the whole nation. He's praying on behalf of a nation. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgment. Hey, how does he know this? Because he read Deuteronomy that says when, you, when we have sinned against you, you're going to cast us into bondage and allow the enemy to come and take us. He's in the word as he prays and it's important because he's in the constitution of God and he's praying according to the constitution. Your word says this and yes, so that you, so in other words, you have done right because you told us if we sin, you're going to put us in the bondage. Deuteronomy tells us that. So now that we're here, Lord, we're recognizing, we're acknowledging, we're not blaming and saying, Lord, you shouldn't have done this. How could you have allowed this to happen to us? No, no, no. Yes, you are right and you judge rightly because you're a good judge and you're a good God. And Daniel said, we. So when we're praying for somebody in captivity, you're praying for our family. You know, all them, Lord, is it them? <laughs> them wicked we have done wickedly against your God because we're now standing in the gap on behalf of the family standing in the gap on behalf of the workplace on behalf of our community on behalf of our nation we have sinned oh God when you look at what's taking place in our nation we have sinned Daniel is showing us how to pray corporate prayer We have sinned, have committed iniquity, have done wickedly, and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgment. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servant, the prophets, he's talking about Moses, which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces, and rightly so. In other words, we are ashamed because we knew that we should not have and we did and now we feel bad about it righteousness belongs to you confusion of face is ours as at this day to the men of judah and to the inhabitants of jerusalem and to all israel that are near and that are far off through all the countries whither thou hast driven them because of their trespass that they have trespassed against thee. Notice, he's confessing the sins. We have trespassed against you. And you have scattered us and driven us out of the land. Just like you, he moved Adam and Eve out of the garden. He did that to his own people in the land of Israel. O oh Lord, to us belong a confusion of face. To our kings and to our princes and to our fathers. Because we have sinned against thee. To the Lord our God belong it mercies. And forgiveness so so let, so let me remind you Lord I know you're a God who is slow to anger and plenty in mercy I'm making my appeal because I know your word says your mercies endureth for hello the man is in the book and he's praying according to the word of God and if he's praying according to the word of God he's praying the will of God because the word of God is the will of God. And if you pray the will of God, God is obligated to respond. Because it is his word and he will always honor his word every time. Daniel is making intercession on behalf of his people in captivity. My God and Savior. Oh Lord, to us being called, belong in confusion of faith to our kings, to our princes, to our fathers. Because we have sinned against thee. To the Lord, our God, belong mercy and forgiveness. Though we have rebelled against you. Though we have sinned, you are still a God of mercy. Though we have failed you, you are still a God that will pardon us. Neither have we obeyed your voice, O Lord, our God, to walk in thy laws which he set before us by his servant, the prophets. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us, 
and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. We have sinned. Hello, remember now, Daniel is a faithful young man. Daniel loved the Lord. There's no flaw that is found in this man. But Daniel stands in the gap and says, Lord, we. Remember with Job? Remember Job? The Bible says, the man that was perfect, eschewed evil, upright. But guess what? Until Job prayed for his friends before he could be restored. Now, just imagine. You don't do anything and your friend will say, I must sin you, sin make with it. Bad look, I take you. God retribution upon you. You know, see? And Job will say, we don't know what we do. <laughs> and Job, Job can't understand what's taking place. Him lose him wife, him lose him house, him lose him children, him lose him livestock in a one day. Now, if you think about that, you know, I must something you do. And these men who came to say comfort him, every day they were nagging him. And guess what? He does not get his release until he prays for them. Now you got to understand even from Daniel's situation. For you to, so I am in this place. I, am, I, I didn't do anything wrong. But I'm taken captive. I was part of the men who said, yes, we need to obey. Turn before we get into trouble. But now I'm taken captive. We have sinned against you, O oh Lord. We have sinned against you. And he hath confirmed his words, which he spake against us, and against our judges that judged us, by bringing upon us a great evil, a great disaster. For under the whole heaven hath not seen done hath, as hath been done unto Jews. We've never seen anything done like this. Jerusalem was plundered, destroyed. This is where God's house is. And God's people were. And worship to the Almighty God took place. And God said, Babylonians, come in. Take them out. Because they have sinned against me. God gave them over to their enemies. They couldn't believe it. But it was not to destroy them. It was to strip them. Of their idolatry so that they can come to serve the true and living God as it is written in the law of Moses all this evil is come upon us notice he's still in the Bible now he's praying praying and he's in the word now according to Moses he says all this is written in the law of Moses all this evil is come upon us yet made we not our prayers before the Lord our God that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth my God you see, in Babylon, what we see taking place, and we saw the struggle even before Babylon. We saw it in the prophet Habakkuk, where Habakkuk is praying, and, and, and he, he understood that God is a just, a just God, and you need to judge the people. But when God told Habakkuk, I'm going to send in the Chaldeans, I'm going to send in the Babylonians, Habakkuk said, hold on, hold on, stop, stop, stop. The Babylonians? I know that we wicked now, but the Babylonians, them, them wicked past wicked, and you are holy God. Can you say those people to judge us? Habakkuk said, don't understand that. It don't make no sense. And he wrestled with God. But God tell us long time. Now like, guess what? If you sin, I'm going to deal with your skin. I have to carry out my order because I need for you to come back into the rightful place. And then Abigail got to that place and said, all right, Lord, you know what you're doing. I'm going to trust you. Because can I tell you, God doesn't make mistakes. God does not err. God cannot err. He can't, he's never wrong. What he does is always best. It's the best thing ever. All when it don't look good and then don't understand it, it is the best thing ever. Put, your children, put all of his children into captivity. What is good about that? He's going to get his glory. He's going to strip them of idolatry and bring them back to a place of true worship and adoration of him. And again, the amazing thing about that is that some of them certainly died in Babylon. And those who came back were those who grew up in 
Babylon, just like those who grew up in the wilderness entered the promised land, and those who came in there died in there because they refused to believe the word of God. But these men stayed in the word and in prayer. And that's why we're emphasizing these disciplines, you know, of reading God's word and praying, because even though we hear it all the time, all the time, are we doing it? Because until we do it, we won't get the revelation and the power that God wants to deposit in us and use us so that his glory can be seen in the earth because somebody needs to see it and somebody needs to come to know it and it's not going to happen until we pray. Let's wrap this up. And now, O Lord, our God, that thou hast brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand. So he's reminding God. God, so he's in Babylon now and he's reminding God of what he did when his children was in Egyptian bondage. You brought us out of the mighty hand and have gotten thee renowned as at this day. We have sinned. We have done wickedly. O oh Lord, according to all thy righteousness, I beseech thee, let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from the city Jerusalem, my God, thy holy mountain, because of our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers. Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. Now therefore, for oh our god hear the prayer hear lord hear because i know you will hear my prayer hear our prayers oh god and we've been praying we've been praying we've been praying hear the prayers of thy servant and his supplication and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for the lord's sake lord do this for your name's sake it's a reproach it look bad your city, your house has been plundered. But I'm praying, Lord, turn your face, Lord, and cause it to shine. In other words, bring back hope where it seems that there's hopelessness. Restore, Lord. Somebody has to stand in the gap. Somebody has to pray for it. Otherwise, it will not happen. Somebody has to pray, need to pray and say, Lord, thy kingdom come. Lord, thy will be done. Daniel is praying for it. Oh my God, incline thine ear. So I want you to hear, and I want you to draw near and incline thine ear, oh God. And hear, open thine eyes. Open your eyes, Lord. Open your eyes. Because I know when you see, you will provide. Look, God, look, look. Open thine eyes and behold our desolation and the city which is called by thy name. For we do not present our supplication before thee for our righteousnesses but for thy great mercies we're doing this because lord not for our sake but for your sake is why we cry unto you oh lord hear oh lord forgive oh lord hearken and do defer not for thine own sake oh my god for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. And while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sins and the sins of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God, yet, yea, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, somebody said the answer is here. While he is praying, here comes the answer. The angel break through the barriers and enter into the earth realm because somebody stayed there long enough in prayer until the answer. Hear, O oh Lord. Hear, O oh Lord. Forgive, O oh Lord. Hearken and do, Lord. Defer not for thine own sake. O oh my God, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. Let us pray until God answers. Let us include in our prayer our brothers and our sisters. Those who were called by his name became the temple of God and is now desolate because they've gone astray, backslidden, turned their backs on the Lord. Our responsibility is to pray and to intercede and to reach the lost and dying. Pray until it happens. While Daniel is praying, it is the love of God that is driving him. Like the love that pulled Nehemiah 
to Jerusalem. Like the love that pulled God out of heaven to earth to come and save us ungodly people. In that same manner, this is the love that we have for God that drives us to go reach the lost and die. And part of the reaching is praying and interceding on behalf of that one who hurt me, that one who injured me, that one who called me name, that one despised me, that one who hated me. I'm going to respond in love. And Stephen says, Lord, do not hold this against them. They're stoning him to death and the love of God came out of him. Because whatever's on the inside is going to come out when you come under pressure. And the love of God hit Saul and saved his soul because somebody was willing to stand and give his life for the name of Christ. Let's bow our heads. Oh Lord, we thank you. Hashama. Me candida bosai. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you for your precious words, your holy words, that is able to bring to our hearts and our minds truths that must be applied to our lives so that we can live. God, I thank you. Thank you for that which was written of old, for our learning. And as we have explored your son, Daniel, who have set an example, Lord, mighty God, we thank you. We thank you. May we take this lesson and apply these truths to our lives and to live accordingly. Give us a heart like thine, O oh God, that will reach the lost and dying, that will be mindful of those who are in captivity, those who are held by the bondages of sin to pray until the answer breaks through the heavenlies and come into the earth domain. Lord, to stay there until and to pray according to your word, to acknowledge that yes, we have failed you. Yes, we have sinned against you. Not to cover up our sins, but to confess it and to turn our backs on it and to look to you for our help for only you can help. For you're a God of mercies, plenteous in mercy, slow to anger. Have your way with us, Lord, as we continue to pray, seeking your face, seeking your will, standing in the gap on behalf of our brothers and sisters, on behalf of our families, on behalf of our communities, on behalf of our church, on behalf of our nation. Lord, pray through us as we pray and let your kingdom come and your will be done. Lord, we receive the night's offering tonight. We ask a blessing upon it as it goes to the furtherance of your work here in the earth, do your good pleasure. You are our judge. May we, Lord, we stand before you and be judged. We'll be found worthy. We will be protected from the hands of the enemy. The lions won't be able to eat us. And we will not bow to the pressures of this world, but stand in the face of adversity and represent you in the earth. May we seek you until divine intelligence is released so we know the dream and the interpretation thereof. May we stay there until you release to us your will and the secrets of your hearts and that we'll run with it and exalt your name in the earth. This we ask, Lord, for your name's sake. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you tonight. God bless you tonight. We'll just receive the offering and then we will go in the name of the Lord. But if there are any questions or takeaway before, we will take same in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We pray and God delivers. We pray and God stops the wall we pray and god delivered god gave us one more chance say we pray and god delivers we pray and god stops the war we pray and God delivered, God gave us one more chance.
praise God. God bless you tonight. God bless you tonight. God bless you tonight. Do we have any prayer requests online? All right. Yes, Sister Daniel. Come, but the microphone is coming. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Go ahead. Bless the Lord, everyone. God bless you. Um, based on the meaning of Daniel's name and his story, can you shed some more light on the meaning of his name along with his story? Like how it, how his story ties in with the meaning of his name? Well, I gave you one example of him being thrown in the land then and God judging and came out. So each step of the way, every step of the way, every king that came, I think he served about four kings, and each king had their own experience. You don't remember the one where the hand appeared and wrote on the wall, and he spoke. And the very night that he spoke was the very night the enemy came in and took over the kingdom. And again, God judged him because God is my judge, meaning not just for my own life, because he's representing God in the nation. And so the nations were being judged as well. Got it? All right. So again, it's not just the... And so, so you saw it in his, in his prayer life. He's not just praying for himself because he's representing God on behalf of. And you, you see, that's how you've got to see God. God is not just for one person. He's for all of us. Yes. Hold on, use the microphone. Those online can hear. Oh. Go ahead. What I recognized um, in regards to Daniel is um, Daniel was being used by God as a warning to the people, but they still were not taking heed. Hence, the, 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 the seven years that Nebuchadnezzar was on his foot like an animal and um, Darius realizing that, although I think he was the only one who actually realized that Daniel was really um, obeying God or is a man of God. All of them recognized it, all of them. Yeah, they did recognize it, but they didn't take to heed until it is that they, they didn't listen to the dreams or the warnings. Right. So um, to confirm or to answer, Sister Daniel's, interesting, Sister Daniel's question. <laughs> yeah. Um, he was giving the warnings that God was giving to the people. And, and, and it goes a little bit further. So remember now, Daniel is in Babylon. He's a representative of God. But he's sent to Babylon, not just for the Jewish people, but it's actually sent there for the Gentile. He's a prophet to the Gentile. Like what you have in Babylon, there's Ezekiel. Ezekiel is a prophet to the Jews that are in Babylonian captivity. So notice that Daniel is actually speaking about Gentiles. The first portion of the book just looks at the story and the rest of it is about the Gentile world. The rest of it is about the Gentile world. So, but Nebuchadnezzar is a Gentile king. He meets in the Persians and and, and Alexander the Great and Rome coming to rule are all Gentile, and Daniel is talking about that. So it's more than just, so how you started, it's not like God sent it down there for the people. It's much more than that. The plan is bigger than that. So men are, men are, men are setting up their kingdom, and God is in the midst of it and ruling in the affairs of men and getting his purpose done. And men need to recognize that even though they're doing this, and in the visions of Daniel and the prophecy of the future, you get to see world kingdoms and what they're like from God's perspective. And they're deemed as animalistic in nature because each of the metals were assigned an animal, which describes the nature. So when they came to attack, the nature that Daniel saw was the nature of an animal. So while men see precious gems in their kingdom, God see an animal. And so what he's doing is revealing the Gentile world power and what's going to happen in the future. 
So to understand Daniel from that perspective to see why he's there. So God has a man alone to go into captivity. But guess what? There are people there who don't know God at all, who needs to know God. And here comes Daniel. All right. Yes, sister Camille. So a pretty basic question. Yeah. Basic, um, but still needs some clarification. Um, for Daniel to be who he was and to have done um, and to have stood as he stood, it must have meant that he would have had a deep and abiding love for, for the Lord. Um, how do you get to that place of having that deep and abiding love? Because, I mean, just for myself, there are times when I, I, I question, do I love the Lord? Um, and I say, Lord, I don't think I love you enough. Right. How do I grow in love? And I know the scripture that says, you know, if you love me, keep my commandments. But you can't keep the commandments and not really love the Lord. Right. Um, but how do you grow to have that deep and abiding love? For Beautiful. The Lord? You said grow in love. And growth happens through discipline. So what is the discipline that Daniel is applying? The discipline of prayer. The discipline of the word. The discipline of fasting. The longer you spend and the more time you spend with somebody is the more you grow on them and the more you love them. You know, a man can meet a woman and she's not the prettiest woman, but you spend enough time with her, you start loving her. Come on. All right, let me help you. Let me help you. When you have these workspaces, that a lot of people are, and every day you go to that workspace, it's that person your face looking at. You just saw them as a stranger person now, but over time, you start to go and go dream about the person. And before long, you get involved with the individual because you're spending time. So guess what? When you start to spend time with the Lord, that three times a day. He told us a secret to know. Three times a day. Every day, reading, praying, reading, praying, fasting. God is revealing out of his word, his will, his heart, his love. It's being impactful. God is transforming him and making him like him so he can represent him in the earth. That's why when Nehemiah got it, it took him that long because God had to process him to get the job done. So it's staying there is the issue. That's the challenge we have. Being consistent in the discipline so that we can grow is where the challenge is. So how do we get there? Consistency in the discipline gets us there every time. Every time. Three times a day without miss to the point where he'd rather die than not pray. And it, it requires discipline. That's, that's the truth. <laughs> Indiscipline is not going to get us there. If you think about it, you practice something over and over and over and over and over and over, it becomes a part of you till it becomes a natural response. And you get good at it. Footballers, pianists, hockey players, boxers, you name it. They consistently practice the discipline. Hours, hours, hours shooting the ball, shooting the ball, shooting the ball. They can close their eyes and shoot the ball. Us, our discipline, stay there until God answers and we learn his voice so when we're walking down the road and we say stop turn left you know who just talked to you you're not wondering you don't turn around and say who that that's when you don't know him but when you know him and you say that you say okay lord and you just turn now ask the question you know because your relationship with him and he just talked to you and you see it in the bible now there are those when god's call and they never wonder who and the others doesn't call and just get them and just move because of the relationship with him. Consistency. All right. Good. All right, we're going to pray. Any other? Don't be afraid to ask any help, you know, somebody else. <laughs> Hold on, the microphone is coming. <laughs> like I see the question on your face, you know. <laughs> Brother Reynolds, yes. I was just wondering, and I. I don't know if it was a question I should actually ask, right? Okay. So um, I'm trying to put together the, the timeline of Daniel and the three Hebrew boys. Right. They were about, they were in the same space at the same time, or they were like years apart. I, I'm not too sure from... Same space, because Nebuchadnezzar was the same ruler. So it was during Nebuchadnezzar's reign. Yes. Which was, I don't know the, the, the time. No, I mean, it, it could be, well, it, it 
remember, you know, depending on how long he was reigning for. Right. I mean, for example, I'm wondering, like, when they were thrown in the fire, where, where was Daniel? Those are the things that are yes. coming yes. to me. Where was Daniel at the time? What, what was happening right. with Daniel at the time? That's right. why I was asking, you know. So the Bible didn't and, and tell when, us? And when Daniel was thrown in a lion's den, yes. what was happening with the, with the boys with at the, the time? Boys. Because... I am thinking that the same thing that caused Daniel to be thrown in the lion's den, yes. the same thing would have happened, happened for, for them. Right. You know, but they, when each story is coming, the other is not being mentioned. That's right. why I asked if they were in the same timeline. Huh? They were in the same timeline. How we know is because it happened under the leadership of Nebuchadnezzar, both the fire furnace and the... The interpretation of the dream, the one with the den now, the, the yeah. lion's den is a different king. That's oh. the Medes and the Persian. Oh, okay. So, Dan so the first, Daniel told Nebuchadnezzar the order of the kingdoms based on his dreams. Yeah. So, Babylon is going to be ruling. Yeah. While Babylon is ruling, yeah. just like how Babylon took over from Assyria and yeah. dust them out, yeah. the Medes and the Persian can come and take over Babylon. Yes. Yeah. And so, his, his reign would have now finished, okay. and the Medes and the Persian are on the scene. Yeah. After the Medes and Persian is reigned for a while, then come Alexander the Great and yes. take over the Medes and the Persian. Yes. And so um, we have a timeline, I can't remember the exact length, yes. but for the interpretation and the fire furnace, yes. it was in the same timeline as during the reign of Nebuchadnezzar. They could be in very different spaces yes. because the Roman is a world governing power. Yes. So there are different spaces. Oh, okay. How, okay. We, how we know that so for example, so the Hebrew boys would have been a part of the astrologers and the counselors right. that are assigned to. So they could have been very well been in another city or something like that. Yes. That's what you mean. Because yes. it's a big space. The Bible says the, yes. the world was divided up into 120 provinces. Okay. Okay. So there are times that Daniel had to go yes. to different eras yes. to give leadership okay. because he seconds the king. Yes. So you have to this so you, this is your key man. Yeah. And you have a, a city over there, a province over there giving some problem, yeah. and you send a key man over there to deal yeah. with it, yeah. while this is happening over here. Yeah. And in those days, it's not yeah. car and plane, yeah. it's chariots and horses. So yeah. you can take a number of these to get and come okay. back. Okay, okay. One, one quick other one. I, I heard you mention that um, John was the greatest prophet while they were um, delivering. Um, that, that is written, right? It is in written. In the Bible, yes. It is said. Yes. Okay. John the Baptist. Is... John the Baptist we're speaking about, Yes, right? that's correct. Okay. Yes. Okay, fine. Just wanted to be sure. And that is right. scripture for me, please. <laughs> no, it's there. I, want, I, wanted, I wanted to actually... It's there. Uh, it says, of all the prophets, there's none greater than John. That's okay. the actual phrase. Okay. Anybody find it? Right, any other question while well, that is being looked at for, for us? All right, we're going to close in prayer. Thank you. Matthew 11 and verse 11 is the text. So I'm quoting scriptures while I teach. Um, I should also tell you it. So it's verily I say unto you, among them that are born of woman, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Matthew 11 and verse 11. Yes, so, so those who are in the kingdom of God now is greater than he, John. That's correct. Because we saw, we, we heard Jesus said, Solomon is was great enough. But him say, a greater than Solomon is here, which is him. So know that he is in our lives. And it's a greater is he that is within than he that is in the so it's where he has elevated us to. So it's, it's he that makes us. It's not we by ourselves become great. It's because of him in our lives we have now been elevated to this position and this status in Christ Jesus. All right. Beautiful. All right. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's bow our heads. Uh, Minister Farquharson, let's pray for these prayer requests tonight as we go in Jesus' name.
prayers being requested for salvation, for healing, for Toran, Toran, Shamar, and Sister Suzette. And then for healing, Sister Gail not feeling well. So let's remember these in prayer. Toran, Shamar, Sister Suzette for salvation. And then for healing, Sister Gail. Let's remember these in prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Come in, Mr. Father. Praise the Lord. Would you stand? Would you stand? Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy for those who make it tonight. Amen. I thought I would <laughs> be in home, but I push and I, and Bridget, I'm very happy I came. When I was leaving, I was a bit discouraged, but hearing the word tonight, amen, my spirit is truly hiking and lifted. So I really want to thank him and the Lord for his word. I'm learning more and more. Don't succumb to the condition, the weather around and don't let it stop you from coming that's not coming i would not have heard what i've heard tonight so bridging please keep on fighting please keep on pushing come out come out i heard pastor lick some um touch on some stuff rather that we were praying on thursday night so i know definitely for sure that god is speaking to us so i ask that you keep on pushing Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray. Oh Lord, our Savior, your name is great. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your manifold blessings. Lord, God is your mercy, God, that is better than life itself. Lord, God, we thank you for the teaching of your words. We thank you for, oh God, the strength that we have gained. We thank you, God, for, oh God, the encouragement. Oh God, we thank you for direction, the guidance that come true, oh God, the teaching of your words. Lord, many of us in house and online have been ministered to, God, and we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, God. We thank thank you we thank you for strength that come through your word we know you're speaking we know you're speaking lord god and we just want to magnify you lord god we just want to give you glory abba father lord and even as we come to you god almighty god we pray we pray oh god that we will truly oh god be doers of your words oh god that we will not be succumb to oh god the situation around us oh god but that we will really push beyond the struggles push beyond whatever it's happening god and oh god and to practice your word and to live by your word father we realize oh god the israelite god because of their disobedience oh god oh god they were sneer god they were brought into oh god babylon of a father god lord many things are happening but god we thank you we thank you god that we can refer back to your word oh god your word told us god that these things were written for our learning i pray jesus and as we go through we pray god that we will pull on the scripture and get hope and strength hallelujah god and to build up our faith jesus lord i pray god even oh god oh great god above everything all else 
uh, help us to pray. Help us to pray, Jesus. Help us not to miss out and say it was a good word. Oh, God, merely a good word. Oh, God, but help us to practice that which we have heard. I pray, God, that we will pray. Lord, and on all of the different instances, we saw Pastor Refa to Nehemiah. Nehemiah prayed. We see, oh God, the Hebrew boys, before they were, were cast in the fire, we know they have a prayer life. Lord, we saw Daniel before he entered into, oh God, the da oh, oh God, the lion then. Daniel had a prayer life. Help us to be praying before before the fire come, before our trials, before adversity. And he, oh God, and for those might not have been praying, those of us that might not have been praying, help us to use this as a medium to get back on track. Lord, help us, oh God, not to merely focus on our individual selves but help us to see the others that are going through their own situation lord help us to look in our workplace and to catch a burden somebody might be sick somebody god might need deliverance somebody might need to be saved lord i pray god and as we pray lord we saw where Nehemiah read the word and he catch a burden hallelujah oh God Daniel rather oh God we saw where Nehemiah asked oh God of the servant that came out of captivity what was happening and when he heard God he was trapped with a burden Lord if we look around us God we can catch a burden Lord we don't want to be like oh God the priest and the Levite who saw but not impacted and not touch and not feel anything but help us when we feel there be a touch in our spirit in our heart and we will be pushed to pray and that we will stay in prayer God, until we hear from you Lord until we get instructions until we find your mind on the matter so so God I ask of you father help us God oh God and maybe I should not say help us because you are helping us tonight by this wonderful word this is your love oh God this is you helping us help us oh God to respond to your help by you teaching us help us to respond to you help Helping us, God. Oh, God, is you loving us? Oh, God, and there are so many that are bound up, and oh, so many that are afflicted. But God, sometimes we are distracted by our own situation. Lord, Daniel could have said, I didn't do anything, it wasn't my fault to be here. Oh, God, but oh, God, Daniel read the word help us to get back to the reading of your word hallelujah God and as we read help us to pray hallelujah Lord God and every instant he pray we saw he used in the word in prayer Lord God he was not coming up with his own opinion he was praying the scripture he was praying the word Lord Lord, I ask of you, God, help us to be student of the word. So, God, as we learn and we study word, we are able to pray the word. Lord, so I ask of you tonight, Lord God Almighty, oh God, whatever the situation might be in our workplace, in our home, and even in 
no God the church help us to see from your perspective help us to find your mind on the matter Lord God Almighty Lord we read a while ago that Daniel Alice oh God as he pray he said for your name's sake Lord not because he's not in his own land anymore but oh God do it for your sake Lord not oh God because he wanted to feel good and go back home but God for your name's sake Lord many times we just want to zip out our problems but can we say for your name's sake can we say for your glory oh God and when we do Lord help us to say it from a true place from a genuineness of our hearts for your name's sake Lord we read we read as Jesus prayed oh God and you says Lord for your glory for your glory you seven John 9 Lord that this man was blind for oh God Oh God, the power of God to be manifested. Lord, help us to find your purpose. Help us to find your reason, your cause in every situation. Hallelujah. Not to succumb to our emotion, but oh God, to see from your perspective. Lord, and for these names as have been lifted. Father, we put them in your hands. You're the healing Jesus. You're the healing Jesus. Your word declared by your stripes. We are healed. And Bethel pray tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, touch them, Lord, from the crown of their head to the sole of their very feet, every tissue, every organ. Lord, Lord, every cell, every ligament, in the name of Jesus Christ, Akashai, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we decree and we declare, turn around, touch them now by your spirit, let them feel your healing virtue, as oh God, the woman with the issue of blood, oh God, you felt virtue, Hallelujah. Let virtue right now flow from you to them. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, deliver, Lord. Those for deliverance, deliver, Lord. Your word says this is the reason why the Son of Man came to destroy the works of the devil. Deliver them, Jesus. Deliver for your glory. Deliver for your glory. Lord, sometime God is only when you stepped in. Lord, somebody gonna say, this is Jesus. So I ask that your Lord stepped in that somebody may see and know that the God of the Bible is still alive in 2020. In the name of Jesus, deliver Lord. Break the struggle. Break prison principalities and powers for your glory Jesus for your own name's sake do it Lord do it Lord your word says it not your will that any should perish but all should come to repentance Lord for those that need to be saved we accept you Jesus save to the uttermost reveal yourself unto them Lord and let them come to you before it's too late. Lord, and even those of us, uh, Lord, who have come to you, uh, help us to bring you to them, to take the word to them. Uh, help us to go evangelize and minister 
witness to them. But God, just as we have heard a while ago, we need you, God, and we can't pull man out of darkness without you. We can't pull them out of darkness without prayer. So we ask of you, Jesus. Oh, God, as we seek to go, oh, God, that we will spend time in prayer. Oh, God, that we will go down on our faces and find your heart for the souls of mankind. Lord, go with us. Go with us, Jesus. Go with us. Go with us. Go with us. So many things happening on the road. Go with us. So treacherous. So many things to destroy your people. But you says, Lord, now unto him that is able to keep us from falling. You are still able to keep us from falling. You promised to be with us in our going out and our coming in you said that 10,000 shall fall at thy side and at thy right hand Lord but it will not come nigh thee but only with thy eyes shall we see the reward of the wicked because we have made you the most high our oh, habitation you are our dwelling place Jesus so keep us Lord keep us from falling from accidents and incidents keep us Jesus we're not keepers of ourselves your words are he that keep it Israel neither slumber nor sleep you promise to keep us in our going out and coming in remember your son your servant pastor Roman overseer Willis remember him Lord remember Remember him, Lord God. I pray, pour back into him, Lord. Pour back into him, Acts Holy Ghost. Pour back into him, let it be like a fountain flow back into him, Jesus. Deposit, deposit as he deposit in us, deposit back in him, Lord. I pray, I pray for his strength, Lord. I pray even now cover him cover his wife and children cover 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 Jesus you know all that concerning him I put him in your hands I put his family and his children his job and everything concerning him in your hand uphold him uphold him Jesus uphold 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 now strengthen fresh strength fresh strength fresh strength for the journey fresh strength in the name of Jesus for the officer team fresh strength Lord for all the administrative workers fresh strength oh God every department team Lord heads up department fresh strength and baptize all of us with prayer baptize us with prayer Jesus Lord hear us hear us hear us we pray hear us we pray we we can't do nothing. Our intellect can't do it. Our understanding, our degrees can't do nothing. Lord, it's you. It's you, Jesus. You said, say John 15, except he abide in me, he can't do nothing of yourself. We recognize we can't do nothing without you. So we need you, Jesus. We need you. We need you, God. We need you. Metal need you. For those watching in line, remember them, Jesus. Remember our homes. Remember our children. Remember our family. Remember, remember, we need you, God. We need you. We can't do nothing of ourselves. So, Father, we glorify you and we give you thanks. Let your will be done. Let your will be done. Be with us as we go and glorify yourself in us and through us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen and amen and amen. Amen. Just a minute. Amen. Brother Damien. Amen. Amen. We're going to have our announcement. You may be seated for just a minute. Amen. Amen. Is the God good? Amen. Keep praying, Bridget. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep pressing. 
I do know sometimes, even when you pray, it seems like things go worse. But keep praying. <laughs> Amen. Tell yourself, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. Amen. Nothing happens until we pray. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise God. So for announcements, for those who are in need of prayer, you should be seeing the, the numbers on screen. Praise the Lord. So you can call or WhatsApp. There's someone at the end of the line waiting to assist. On October the 12th, this, um, the uh, Bethel United Church National Ladies Department presents WEEP. Women Empowered Through Effectual Prayer. And the theme they'll be looking at is Woman of Zion, Set Your House in Order. And this will be held at the Bethel United Church, Maypen, starting at 10. So we ask those who are interested to give your names to Sister Pamela Chambers. Praise God. Um, the Youth and Children Ministry uh, we'll be having a special presentation on October 27th at 6.30 p.m. sharp in Sanctuary under the theme, Preserving the Legacy, Estate Planning and Considerations for Christians. So I know a lot of times we may have questions as it pertains to, you know, dead left, whose land is X, Y, Z. We will be having a lawyer coming in. Praise the Lord. We are blessed to have someone who is in the field. Um, to do a presentation so come with your questions and please this is a, a special guest so don't let you come and see one person in the house please to come out october 27 mark your calendars at 6 30 pm um, the national youth ministry continues with our bible drive and we ask that you can continue to contribute at camp we gave over 50 or 80 bibles out because of this ministry Praise the Lord, so we ask that you continue to bless the ministry. We continue tomorrow in the morning, fasting service. Thursday night, we continue in prayer, and we'll be having prayer meeting. And Friday night is still youth service, saints, so we'll be having youth service in the sanctuary. So I ask you to come out. Um, we ask that you join the mission department Saturday, this Saturday at 4 p.m., as we'll be going out into the community to share the word, to pray. Uh, we'll be conducting Lord's Supper on Sunday night, August the 13th. So October, October the 13th. So we're asking everyone to come out. So our organization will be having our Voice of Holiness anniversary coming up October 27th in the morning so we ask that you continue to support and you can do this through contributions. Um, so I know there are envelopes at the back that you can receive and put your contribution in and you can give it to, to one, of, one of the usher. Please call it an envelope. Oh, so it's not to brother that mean, it's to the ushers. All right, um, so the school classes continue and this Sunday will be fifth Sunday so we will be having combined Sunday school classes. All right? All right, the Lord, Lord bless you. Praise the Lord, can you stand? Praise the Lord, can you raise your right hand? Praise the Lord, Lord, if in the close you shall appear before we get back here, don't us worthy, O God, to be with thee. In Jesus' name, amen. Can somebody say in Jesus' name?